Hey, I'm Mike Baccarella, and today we're going to take a look at three really great chord melody lines from George Van Epps that we can add to our comping and our solo guitar playing. Let's take a look. This first line is a 2-5 in the key of E flat major. So we have F minor 7, B flat 7, D flat major 7. And it's a quick 2-5, so each chord lasts for two beats. Let's start by taking a look at our melody that he's playing on top. So we have a B flat, A flat, G, F, and we go up to G. The first two notes are played with the F minor 7. And then the second two notes are played with the B flat, and we land on an E flat. So those first two notes, the B flat and the A flat, well the B flat over the F minor 7 is the 11th, and the A flat is the 3rd. So we're just going to put that on top of our basic F minor 7 shapes. We have F, C, E flat, A flat in this position. So I'm going to use my pinky to grab that B flat on top of the chord. And you'll notice that I'm not playing on the 4th string here. I'm actually getting rid of that note because I'm, I'm playing finger style and I'm only playing the 5th, 2nd, and 3rd strings. So, so I'll start with that B flat there on the top, and then I bring it down to the to the third, the A flat. So I got that melody on top moving, right? Then I jump down to a B flat 13 shape, basically. So I got B flat, A flat, D, G. Because our next melody note is G, so I want that G on top. And then I and then I come down to F. And that F I'm barring across my first finger. So so far we have. For the B flat seven chord, I'm I'm now picking the, the the sixth string, fourth string, third string, and second string, and then I'm just going to land on that G and play an E flat major seven with that. So I have this position at E flat major seven. I got E flat, B flat, D, and e, and G on top. So here's the full line. We could also make the melody go down and just walk down the scale that way. So for the F minor 7 and the B flat 7 portion, we're going to keep everything the same. And when we get to E flat, we're going to play this, this shape of an E flat 6 chord. So we got 6th fret, 5th fret, 5th fret, 4th fret on the 5th through the 2nd string. So we got E flat, G, C, E flat. And that gives us the, the, the root note on top. So now we've looked at the same basic melody and how we can resolve it two different ways. And that's a big part of what George Van Epps playing is all about, is playing chords, but having the melody note on top kind of dictate where we're going. That's the most important thing in his comping and his solo playing. And that's something that we should grab into our playing too, to make sure that melody is always king, even when we're comping. The second example is a quick 2-5 in the key of G major. So we have A minor 7, D7, G major 7. And our melody on top is D, C, B, C, D. Now the way he plays this is pretty interesting. So he's, for the A minor 7, we're going to pick just three strings. We're going to pick the A on the 5th fret of the 6th string with our thumb. We're going to pick the G on the 5th fret of the 4th string with our index finger. And then with our ring finger, we're going to pick the D on the 2nd string 3rd fret. That's our basic chord voicing. And then we're going to grab the C on the 3rd string 5th fret with our pinky. And we're going to pick that with our middle finger. And we want to make sure that when we do that, we let go of the D here. Because we're not playing with the notes that are ringing together. We want them to be, the top notes to be separate. We want to clearly hear that melody note move. Okay, from there we go to this kind of... D6 shape. So we have D, F sharp, and B. We have D on the 5th fret of the 5th string, and then our 1st finger is barred across on the 4th fret on the 3rd on the and 4th string. And so our top note's B, and then we're going to take our 3rd finger and come down on the 5th fret of the 3rd string on that C. And then we land on this G major 7 chord that we know. So we have 3rd fret, 4th fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 
on the sixth, fourth, third, and second string. G, F sharp, B, D. So here's our full line. We can take this and move this to different positions too because the melody is what's king here. As long as we harmonize the melody properly, we, we, we got a good line. So I'm going to take it and move it to a more familiar shape. It's kind of A minor 11 here. So 7th fret, 4th string, 9th fret, 3rd string, 8th fret, 2nd string, 10th fret on the 1st string with our pinky. I'm going to play the same melody. I'm going to harmonize it the same way. I'm just going to use different chord shapes. And I'm taking my second finger and let it bar across the 1st and 2nd string there on the 8th fret so I can cover that C as it comes down. Now this might take some practice to get used to to this kind of bar. I need a B on top and I'm going to play a D7. So I'm going to use this shape, this D13. So we got C, E, F sharp, B. 10th fret on the 4th string, 9th fret, 3rd string, 7th fret across the 1st and 2nd string. And I'm going to grab that C with my second finger there. And I'm going to go up to some, uh, a G6-9. So I got B, E, A, D. 9th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret, 10th fret. It's important to know what note is on top of your chord voicings and what notes are nearby so you can move melodies around, just like George Van Epps is doing with these. And when you get a melody you like, try to move your melodies around to different chord shapes. Now for this third example, we have a 3-6-2-5 in the key of C. So we have E minor 7, A7, D minor 7, G7, C major 7. And each chord lasts for two beats. So we're starting here with this E minor 7 shape. So we've got E, G, D, E. 7th fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret on the middle four strings. And he's picking the bottom three strings and then grabbing the second string afterwards. Like that. So, so we have a melody. And we're going to do that same move chromatically down until we get to D minor. So it's all the same moving down. Now that E flat minor 7, how does that, how does that function as A7? Well, it, it kind of does, but it also kind of doesn't. If you look at it with the notes we have, the E flat is a flat fifth of an A7. The G flat here, or the F sharp, would be our, our 13. The D flat or C sharp would be our third. And then we have another flat five on top. So this all actually totally works as a seven. And then we get down to D minor seven. Okay, and then we go to D flat seven here. And this is substituting for G seven, it's a tritone substitution. And we have a, a B natural or a C flat on top. So we have D flat F and B natural or C flat here with our second, first, and third fingers. And after we get that B, we're gonna use our pinky to grab the C on the fifth fret of the third string. So we have a little melody moving. And then we jump down to C major 9. And we have the C, E, B, and D here. 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret. So we have a melody moving down. I hope you have as much fun looking at these as I do. Every time I look at some of these kind of chord lines like this, it really grabs my attention because the melodic content is so great. They, these are moves that as we practice them, our fingers get more and more adept at doing these kind of things. And then in our own comping or solo guitar playing, some of these things will start to kind of come out of us. And I, I really, I really think that's very valuable to have because when you're comping, you don't want to just play the same voicings all the time. Because if you're playing the same sort of stuff all the time, it kind of shows that you're not listening to the soloist or the group or the singer or the melody. We should be responding to them you know, the, to the best of our ability. And that doesn't mean getting in their way and playing all kinds of melodic stuff. But when there's an opening, maybe a little small melody might make a big difference. Or if they're playing in the high range, maybe we should go down to the low range and vice versa. If they're playing low, maybe we should go high and have these, this kind of flexibility to kind of fill in gaps or respond to what they're doing can really help us. And then of course, in our solo guitar playing, the more ways we can view a melody moving around, the better off we're going to be. So having knowledge of what notes are on top of our chord voicings is going to go a long way for that kind of playing. So thanks for checking out this lesson.
Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.